In this video, I'm going to show you how I made one of these. There's nothing wrong with this one. I just didn't want to spend about $250 on Amazon to get one. So I started off with two pieces of lumber that I actually got from my neighbor. They're pressure treated pieces of lumber. That wasn't really important for this project, but that's what I had. So they had recently been throwing out a six by six by 10 which in actual dimensions is about four and a half inches in either direction. It was 10 feet long and it was an old fence post that I ripped in half to give me um, pieces that were four and a half by about two and a quarter. Before I ripped them in half, I cut that 10 footer down to, I think it was about seven feet long. So I had these two pieces to form my sides. Um, the second piece of lumber I got from them was a six by four by eight, which in actual dimension is five and a half by three and a half and it was eight feet long and I did the exact same thing. I cut it in half so I had two four footers and then I ripped both of those pieces in half with left me at with about four pieces that were two and three quarters by three and a half. Then for the bottom base I had um, a scrap two by four laying around and I used that. I didn't cut the two by four in half because I wanted it to be less than 48 inches so that it could fit in most cars. Now my joinery method for this was a combination of lap joints. Um, in order to make that work best, I realized that those side braces need to be a little bit thinner. They needed to match the thickness of the two by four at the base in order to make those half laps work. So I ripped those down to size. You could see me reassembling it. So now everything's flush and level. If those aren't the same dimension, um, you won't be able to cut perfect half laps. Now you could see from the way this is set up, if you wanted to, you could attach this with butt joints. I chose to use half laps because it is gonna be holding up weight and kids are using it. So I marked center on my two bottoms and I, that was going to be the first cut I was going to make on this. So that base, I'm just going to cut off the thickness of that 2x4 at the bottom. On my radial arm saw, I raised the blade up to get that perfect um, halfway through mark of my lumber. I make a bunch of curve cuts and then chisel out the excess. And um, these are the easiest way for me to make laps is on the radial arm saw. To adjust that blade is, is pretty quick and then even removing this excess goes by fast as well. And then you can see now that two by four fits in there perfectly. And then I could take measurements for those two angled braces. So once again, I found center where those braces will meet on the top piece of my board. I laid them on there and then just made marks. So then for the top piece, I found center on that center board. And then for my two braces, I found center on the piece of the brace material. And I laid that center mark to match the center mark on the center material and was able to draw um, an angle on that piece once I had it laying on there. Then I just traced um, the bottom as well to cut off those excess pieces just so that no one trips on them. I didn't want a pointed corner at the bottom. I used the bevel gauge to transfer all those angles and then I could transfer that angle to um, I have a setup on my my crosscut sled that lets me cut angles so I set that to the right angle using the bevel gauge originally on the saw to get that angle and then I could cut all of my pieces with that one setup. So then in order to cut that top angle it's a pretty steep angle but um, I was able to make adjustments on my cross cutting sled to cut that as well. So I was just using the bevel gauge in order to get that original angle and the line as well as a visual cue. And then I was able to cut all those pieces on the top, transferring those marks to each consecutive piece and cutting them identical. And then once all those were cut, I could assemble the dry fit and see how everything would work. And everything went together really well. My angles lined up. There was a little gap at the top but this lumber's reclaimed lumber, and um, since it's pressure treated, it was already kind of ra uh, warped and cracked, and I didn't bother planing or jointing it beforehand, so I wasn't surprised that there was um, some issues with fits. So at the top of my pieces, in order to cut those laps to meet the base and the top, I ended up using a circular saw um, because I can't really cut angles easily on the radial arm saw. 
So I had my marks from where all of my pieces met, and you could see I'm just cutting a series of curves on all of those pieces. It's the same as you would do it on the radial arm saw, but it's just easier to do it freehand when you have steep angles. So then I chiseled out all that excess, and these are going to be the laps. So now you have um, these, these side braces where your pieces can't move because they're lapped together. They can't twist or torque holding up that weight. And then for the time being, I just sunk some screws in there. I was going to replace these with lags later on down the line. I kind of wanted to make sure it worked first before I put the effort into doing that. And I made two of these, obviously, to hold up up the bucket. These are the sides. And like I said, you can you can make these with butt joints. I would still cut that angle at the top, but I liked to use laps because kids can be pretty rough with things, and I didn't want to have to worry about any accidents. And making them does not take substantially longer than making those butt joints. So this is me putting together the second one. Um, they were identical because I cut all my pieces on that cross-cutting sled. And if you don't have a neighbor that was throwing away lumber you could use for this project, with the approximate dimensions I have, you can make this with 2x6s and 2x4s. They don't have to be the exact same sizes as I have. So then I propped these up in my shop and I found where I wanted that cross member to be where I was going to hold the bucket and that was based on the chair that was going underneath of it. I found the measurement for the height, the top height of my head sitting in a chair and I placed the bucket a little bit above that so adults and children could fit in there and then I just um, leveled and screwed these two little scrap pieces of 2 by 4 there so that when I take this apart and then reassemble it I easily can know where those pieces go they could sit on those 2 by 4s and I could screw them in so then I had a scrap piece of um, pressure treated decking so it was about five and a half inches by three quarters inches I ripped that in half and I used that as my cross member once again just screwing everything in place and I could place it with lags. So I kind of re reverse engineered this project a little bit, but um, everyone that has made these online before has used toilet. Uh, they've basically turned it into an old style toilet where the tank is on the wall. So I bought a three inch kit for the toilet. Um, that's what they recommend. I think you could get away with a two inch kit. And then I had to buy all the connectors in order to get it to fit into a hose. And right about here is where I realized the kit I bought, which I thought also had the fill tube and the, the connector for the, the, um, the bucket wasn't in it. So I had to stop what I was doing. And then I just started work on the arm mechanism. So I had the leftover piece of that porch post. I cut it in half and um, drilled a hole into this. I obviously used wood for the sides as well as I used a small piece of PVC and conduit to make the target trigger mechanism. A lot of the videos I've seen people are using PVC for the whole build and at that point you might as well buy one because the PVC is going to be extremely expensive and then you have to build it on top of buying all of it. So I drilled that hole on my drill press and then I used it as a guide to then transfer that hole into the one side of my armature. So then once I had that piece, I used the bucket kind of as a guide, and then I just moved it over, and that is um, an inch piece of PVC, which means that um, a piece of conduit will fit inside of it. It's not a perfect fit. Um, it's a little bit of a loose fit, but it ended up working. It was really cheap. I had that piece of PVC as well as a piece of conduit. So I just cut down that conduit because it was a 10 foot piece. I just guesstimated it and then would change it later. And then you could use a bender to bend this stuff. I don't own a bender, so I just used a hole in my table. And I put a little 45 at the end of it. And you could see how that conduit now spins freely um, sitting inside of that PVC. So that's what you need. You just need something that when you hit it, it will trigger the mechanism. So then that night I went to the store and I got the flush valve kit, which coupled with the kit I already had is all the pieces you need to make a toilet, essentially. I also have a brass fitting that goes onto your hose and then a valve so that I could turn it on and off, but that also will t um, connect into the 3 8 inch connector you have at the end of your toilet. Now you could buy this in one whole kit. 
um, I was being hasty when I was shopping and I didn't get it or and this is the three inch kit you um, I read online that the water will come out faster with it but in my opinion you could probably get away with the two inch kit which is a little cheaper all this together was about 30 bucks which is all I ended up spending on this so the first thing I did was drill a hole in the bottom of my bucket and that three inch hole saw is a little bit small for this the threads on on the flush valve so then I just filed it to fit and got it to fit in there nicely so you want a nice tight fit I, I filed that hole just enough so that I was actually able to almost thread this into the bottom of the bucket you want that rubber gasket to, to seat really nicely on the bottom and then there's a, um, a screw nut plastic that goes in there as well and then the overflow tube is kind of depressed when you buy it so it fits in the box so I just pulled it up to pop it out and then the flapper also has a setting that allows a certain amount of water into it or not into it I ended up setting that on the high side and changing it to about halfway um, in order when I was tinkering with it to get it to work so then I just um, put I assembled this just like you would a toilet. I'm sure there's people out there that can tweak this and modify it to their liking, but I knew I was probably only going to use this a couple times. So then I marked a spot for the fill valve, and that was about a one inch hole. It, once again, you had to kind of sand it so it was a perfect fit. There's a washer that goes on the end of the fill valve, and then that gets shoved in there. And once again, a plastic, a plastic nut. So that washer is a little bit wider than the one inch. So right now I'm fitting that washer so it fits in that hole perfectly. And then there's a plastic nut that goes on the end of it. Um, and then I tested the fitting on the bucket and then hook the refill tube up to the overflow pipe just like you would a real toilet. And then I just kind of made some initial adjustments on the flow. I set everything at about the halfway mark and then tweaked it as I wanted the height of what you adjust the float to is going to be how much water goes into the bucket. There is a cheaper option to using all the plumbing pieces for a toilet and um, it's a little easier to set up because it's made to connect directly to your hose and those are float valves. Um, I'll put a link in the description to a guy that uses these for his setup and this would have been easier and like I said a little bit cheaper but the problem with this setup is um, it's not readily available depending on where you live at a lot of stores so it's kind of my hands were a little bit tied and I ended up just using the toilet setup. The other thing about the float valve it is it will fill your bucket a little bit faster than the toilet setup. So once I had my bucket in place I could fine tune um, the target trigger mechanism so I cut down that piece of, of PVC pipe I had and put it back into place and then put that conduit in there and made some marks for cutting down that conduit as well. Same exact thing I cut that down so, um, so they weren't oversized. So then I drilled a hole into the end of that conduit so that you have some sort of armature here that will that will attach to the end string of your flapper and when you hit that target and that string and with that armature moves it pulls up the float. I ended up drilling this in the wrong location you'll see it in the video is moved um, I just need to make it perpendicular to that original hole. So then for the target I had um, I think this is a two by six laying around I just put um, use my compass to make a circle and my jigsaw to cut out that circle and um, I ended up using a thicker piece of, piece of lumber because I wanted that my trigger moves fairly easily so I wanted some weight at the end of it to keep it from moving around too freely and um, I wanted to just attach it simply by drilling a hole into the end of that uh, two by six and then just epoxying the trigger in place which makes my life much easier I don't have to think about some sort of mounting mechanism so once I had that hole you could see the conduit fits right into place I put some epoxy in there later um, before I painted it and then everything fit so at this stage I decided that for the base I wanted um, some slats there I didn't do this originally because I didn't want people to trip over them but I definitely think it needed it so with some of that scrap left over from from the sides I just cut down some pieces and then would attach them I show that attachment later in the video so then on that one piece that holds up the trigger me mechanism is where I started replacing the screws with lags that's probably one of the more important pieces you don't want to move around on you 
I ran out of lags for this build, so some of this stayed as screws, but most of them were replaced with lags. So then in order to get um, those pieces on the bottom as flush as possible, I went through and curve cut out um, the recesses for them to fit in. So this is just cutting out recesses on all those pieces for those bottom braces to fit in, cleaning them up with a chisel, and you'll see how nicely they fit in there. And then I could just screw them from the bottom. So that's what it looks like with those braces on bottom, and it became much sturdier after I added those pieces. So then this is everything set up and working. Um, I started to run out of time towards the end of this. I wanted it to be done. For this is what the finished tank looked like. Um, I didn't get to film a ton at the end because I was super crunched for time so obviously I painted it um, I did not film that you could see it's um, the color is kind of a bluish color and I had that paint I also painted the target and the target moves really easily so that the whole thing worked and then in the back here is the hookup that I um, was talking about. So this goes into the hose and it's nice because you now have an on off. And then I did have um, a bracket here that held this up, but we ended up using the hose for something else later. So that came apart. And then you could see how it connects to the bucket. Now I did find it was easiest to connect this to the hose first because you want a really tight connection there or it leaks and then you can hand tighten the, the toilet connection to the bucket and that just will not leak even if it's just hand tight. So there's still some water in there and to get this to work the best because um, I tested a few things you can't really see it but I ended up moving this knob that I showed you to about halfway and then I just had a piece of this is like Venetian blind cord it goes through an eye hook in the back so this is just a bolt you could see it's bolted to the back of the bucket and that just keeps this lined up so that when this rocks this pulls directly straight up so that goes to the bolt coming out of here this is only like a six inch bolt it's very simple I just have a bolt with a washer and a bolt with a washer this is wrapped around that bolt a couple times and sandwiched in there super simple um, this I, I had to play around with this setup a little bit to get it the way I wanted it but this is nice because it's it's adjustable if something happens um, it's easy to tighten this or loosen the string and get it to work the way you want because to really fine-tune it you have to play around with the length of this string and depending on how hard um, you're hitting the target. Also, I didn't want to spend a ton of time doing some sort of fancy mock-up because I've made stuff like this before in the past and really I knew we were probably going to use it once or twice and then I was going to take it apart and use the pieces for something else. So by doing it this way, this literally took 30 seconds and I didn't have to worry about, you know, spending a lot of time making a special mount for it when I really didn't need it. You can see how that pipe moves in here really easily. I had no problems with that at all. And the mechanism works quite well. I if I mentioned this, but I also screwed the bucket to this post so that um, it won't, I won't have to worry about it falling over. So all in all, I was in this for only about $30 because everything I pretty much had and was free. If you had to buy all the parts of this, I bet you building it the way that I built it, you could probably still do it for about under $100. And with the plumbing pieces in there, this filled up probably about to here, which is most likely about two and a half to three gallons. And that was more than enough water um, for each go. I would definitely not do the whole five gallons. That would just be a huge waste of water. You could probably even do less than what I did.